them are pretty well versed in, in the uh, in the three D design software we're going to be learning throughout these this course of seven weeks. Um, so yeah, if you need any help, just raise your hand and one of them will come to you and help you. Okay. All right. Um, so now it's your you guys' turn to introduce yourselves. I want to learn your names. I want to learn like what what your experience with three D design is. I just want to know a little more about you so we can get to know each other better. Um, so let's just start from. On that point right there. So just give your name, school, grade, and your experience of three years. Okay, my name is Rishi. I go to Kennedy. I'm in seventh grade, and I have basically no experience with three D design, other than that one time when my when a classmate three D printed something and brought it to school. Okay, cool, cool. That's good. Um, my name is James. I go to Miller Middle School. I'm in seventh grade, and I have no experience with three D design. Good. All right. Um, That's good. We, we like those. We like I like them. that. All right. Um, what's your name? I'm Terry. My Google Chrome broke. Okay. okay. I will fix that later. Um, keep okay. going for now. I go to the same school as Joy. I mean, the same grade as Joy, and I never use 3D design. Are you like best friends? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. We are best friends. Oh, nice. Yeah, best we friends. are best friends. Right, See, she's name? still in her trap for I'm uniform. Some, I changed clothes. I'm Isamu. I'm in fourth grade. At Cumberland Elementary. Okay. And Toma is my brother. And he's taught me a couple things about 3D printing. So I know about Fusion 360 and Alright, I'm glad we have this like yeah, sharing anyway. It's good, it's good. Um, what about you guys? What's your name? My um, name is Jack. I go to Almond Elementary School. Right. I'm in fourth grade and I have no idea what we're doing. That's good, that's fine. My name's Derek. My friend's Jack. We used to be in the same school. I go to Parker. Uh, my, I'm in fourth grade, and I have no idea what's happening right now. So, my name is Jocelyn. Yeah, I, I go to Kennedy, and I know nothing about 3D design besides for the time I went to the library and they uh, printed something. Okay, so, so you actually got something 3D printed? Yeah. Nice. Uh, you? My name is Timothy. I go to Dilworth Elementary. I'm in fourth grade and I have no experience. That's fine. My name is Leo. I go to Challenger. I'm in fourth grade and I don't have any experience. Okay. All right. Um. Looks like everyone. Oh, we have one more. Um, Lucas. Okay, we'll get back to you. Alright guys, so we're gonna um, start off with some ground rules. Um, you guys need to pay attention to this since um, the rules have actually changed from previous years. If you were doing, um, how many of you have done um, at some, some class from SUI in a previous year? No one? So this is all your first, like everyone's first time taking a class here? Okay, no, that's fine, that's fine. Um, so basically we just have a few basic rules that's that we need to keep, guys. guys no, guys, that's unfair. Um, that's number one, okay, keep the classroom clean, okay? This classroom isn't ours, okay? So we need to make sure we keep it clean for the teachers who actually work here every day. Um, and also when we're working on our tasks, uh, our computers stay focused. Don't go off task on, like, YouTube or something and, like, watch Minecraft videos or something. Um, yeah, stay on task, stay focused, yeah. Be respectful. When someone else is talking, right, don't... Don't talk over them, okay? Just listen to what they have to say, and then once they're done, you can raise your hand, and, just, and, and you can speak. Um, and one more new thing is no food this time, because I think they got mad, because we had too much like, food trash flying around. So, yeah, no, no food, okay? Um, if you want to eat food, just wait, wait until after class, and go outside. Um, and 
last thing, no video games, okay? If I catch you playing video games. Yeah, okay, so just don't, don't play video games, okay? My, my TAs are, my TAs have, have, have their eyes on me too. Okay. Yeah, we'll make you run laps around the roller. No, no, I won't play games. But just, um, try not, I mean, don't try not to play, don't play games, okay? We're here to learn 3D design, not to play Minecraft. Okay, all right, so, um, let's start off with what is 3D design? Does anyone have an idea? Yes? 3D stuff. Um, yes, that is correct. Oh, does anyone, do you know what? Because my dad printed something that's 3D. Okay, um, all right, do, do you know what 3D stands for? Yeah. What? Three-dimensional thing. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So what does 3D design mean? Yeah. What is 3D design? That is not what it means. Do you want to elaborate on the topic without <laughs> using the words that it Good. Anyone else? Um, Anyone else? Oh, you, yes? Um, 3D design is something that you use to print or something to make like, I don't know, a hammer? What? <laughs> sure, sure, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, oh. you, can, you, can, you can use... Okay, um, okay um, but yeah, basically you can, you can 3D printing is part of 3D design, right? 3D design... Um, it's just a, like an like an umbrella term for three D printing and doing stuff like different different places too. Um, does anyone have like a something to sum us up for three D design? If you're raising your hand. Oh yeah. Um, three D design is basically um, like you can design like it's making something that you can print out of plastic. Sure, sure. This, that, that's what, this thing does print out yes. plastic, and you do design some things on the computer that will be able to print it out. Um, that will be able to be printed out on the printer. Okay, um, what is projected? That's on. I'll move on to the next slide. Which makes you? Is, wait, no, it turns out. They make them? You make them from 3D design. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, so 3D design um, in like kind of formal terms is the process of designing an object in a special software that allows you to model objects in 3D. Um, so basically your computer will have like a, a computer can basically render a 3D object, basically you can display a 3D object on, on the screen, right? And you can turn around, look around, and do different things with that object. Um, and this type of software, we call it CAD, okay? Um, C-A-D, okay, that's CAD. Um, which is short for computer aided design, meaning computer helps you design something. Okay. Um, Alright, so in some CAD examples are SketchUp, Fusion 360, Inventor, and Maya. These are all different names of um, different names of 3D design softwares. And CAD is something is the 3D design software we're gonna be using today. Um, and throughout this throughout Please, these seven weeks. Don't get rid of that. I want Okay, uh, uh, don't don't worry, don't take notes. You need to take notes in this class. I'll send all the slides to you so you can take all the notes you want at home. Is that okay? Yeah. Right. Don't, don't worry about taking notes in this class. This class is all hands on. Alright, so let's take a look at some tinker, uh, Tinkercad examples. So this is something, um, these two things are something that I've designed. They're not my ideas, but I like kind of modeled them inside this environment. Does anyone know what this is? Pokemon. 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 Yes, anyone specific? Legendary Pokemon. More specific? Yeah. Regigigas. That's right. Okay, Regigigas. Anyone know what this is? Yeah, Tate. Tate. Sherman. Toy Box. Wait, raise your hand. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What was that? A tank from Toy Box. Toy Box? No, Not Sherman. quite. Does anyone know exactly Sherman. where? Yeah. Tank from Roblox? No. Nope. <laughs> it's a game. I, it's, yeah, a game. Yeah, yeah, no. it's a game that was popular maybe five years ago, three, four years ago. It's probably. Tank it's Star. Yes. It's a Sherman from World War Two. No, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't think so. Okay, it's. Um, have you guys heard of Tanky Online? No. Oh, yeah. This is a. Uh, if you play that game, this is a uh, Wasp and Smoky Turd. Yeah. Okay. Um. Fusion 360. So this is a different type of modeling software than Tinkercad. Okay. Tinkercad, as you can see, they're kind of like oops. they're kind of like blocky, like really like sharp corners and stuff. But Fusion Fusion 360, you can make like more smooth objects like this, and there's like light reflection that you can change to. Um, we won't be doing this in this class. Um, we'll be doing Tinkercad in this class. Yes. Um, and that's a Lego brick right there. Uh, basketball right here, and this right here. 
the sword that I designed in Fusion 360. Nice. Um, and I actually uh, made a template. I, I made it into, I printed out, I un basically, how do I explain this? I took, I took the model in my, in my designing software, right? I put it into different software that unfolded the model into like, it's like a flat piece of paper. And then I cut it, uh, cut it out and then folded it together to make this. And so yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty nice. You guys can take a look later. Um, all right, so what do we use it for? What do we use 3D uh, design printing for? So one Video thing, games. Like, Wait, I'll, I'll ask you. <laughs> if you guys, want, if you guys want to say something, please raise your hand. Okay, just, just, just raise your hand. Um, yes, uh, that is right. Video games. We do use 3D design for a lot of video games. Um, we also use it for quick uh, prototyping. Basically, what that means is we can quickly design something that we want to test out or use with a 3D printer. Um, and augmented reality. Does anyone know what that is? Not you. No, no one knows what that is. What about virtual reality? Yeah. A little bit, like VR. It's like where you put on these goggles and it's like connected to this device and then like you walk around and then there's like this like theme building or like place and then like it's like you're actually there but you're actually just seeing it through your goggles. Yeah, that's right. Basically you can, you can like imagine like you can basically see a 3D world with like your with your, through your goggles, right? You can look, like, turn, turn your head, and you'll see something different. You'll see, like, a table, a chair there, something, a shelf there. Um, that's what um, virtual reality is. Augmented reality, this, um, it's, a little, uh, it's a little different, but pretty similar. Basically, what that means is um, you're, you, have an, you have a scene. Let's just say this classroom, right? And I can take a vase from online or something and just put it on that table. I can see the vase through my phone or something, and I can see it on that table right there. Um, uh, let's see. So, for example, an augmented reality example is like Pokemon Go. Who's played Pokemon Go? <laughs> yeah, so you know, you can turn on the, the augmented reality thing and you can see like the world there and the Pokemon is just sitting like right there. Um, yeah, and so it's also used for furniture shopping. So, you can test out how a piece of like furniture looks inside your house. Like, say I want like a red velvet couch right there, I can just like drag it in and see how it looks like. Um, what is 3D printing? Does anyone know? Yes. Uh, printing things out of plastic and it's printed except not with paper but 3D. Yeah, that's right. Um, what the printing we probably all know of is like on our plastic like paper printer like that one right there. Um, a piece of paper comes out, there's like ink on it, there's like you can have like different images, colors. Um, but 3D printing, we actually print a physical object that we can hold, just like Lucas said. Um, and Basically, what happens um, in 3D printing is 3D printing. Right, we have this is this is right here is actually a 3D printer. If you didn't know, um, and what happens basically is actually I'll explain that later. But 3D printing is what we use for actually designing prototypes because this actually prints quickly and you don't need to send send your design to a factory or something. Yes, you have a question. Um, it's a moment. It's a basically. At my school, in computer class, on the back counter, I see a 3D printer, like every day I was printing this, like, plastic star. Really? Yeah. That's not school, that's cool. Do you know how, like... It's like 3D. Do you know how, like, big it is? Is it bigger than mine? Is mine better? Um... <laughs> okay. It's as big as your, your 3D printer, and the um, star was about the size of my nose. I see. Yeah. So yeah, just like you said, you can print stuff of like different sizes, right? So for example, right here, I have um, actually this is a terrible example. Um, but okay, let's just take a look at this sphere inside the inside the box right here. I can print stuff like this size out, or I can print something bigger out, like uh, your snowflake here, right? And it all depends on how you design it in your computer and send it to the printer. Right? If you design something of this size and you print it out, it'll be printed out in that size. Okay. Yeah. So once you've created a model in your CAD software, you can then print it out using your 3D printer. Okay, all right, and so the, there are three basic steps um, to, to basically print something out. First, you need to design it in your design software, and in, and in our case, it's gonna be Tinkercad. And what, what Tinkercad will output for you, which means like what it'll produce, is what we call an STL file. Okay? And that STL file, we then send it into a, uh, another software, we call, um, in my case, it's Simplify3D, 
basically what we call a slicer software. And what it'll do is it'll just it'll disassemble the three D model into like layers. As you can see right there, I just like dragged up and down and there are different like layers of um, the print. Um, and what it outputs is a G code specific to a, to the printer. Okay, and this uh, G code, if you if I have a G code for this um, blue printer right here, another printer like the printer at your school, the G code probably won't work for it. So it's specific for the type of printer you're using. Okay. Um, I'll explain a little more of that um, in detail later. Uh, and this uh, gray stuff, I'll explain it actually later too. Oh um, yeah, and then once you print out a 3D printer, you get, just get your plastic. And that right there is actually it's a white version of this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it says the extruder heats up at 200 degrees Celsius. Does anyone know how much that is? Oh, just enough to melt plastic? Um, yeah, actually, a specific type of plastic. We call this plastic PLA. Okay? It's a is it like the one we use in like, the hot glue gun? Uh, no, hot glue gun is a different type of um, it's not even plastic. I don't even know if it's plastic. It's like a little different. No, PLA is crunchy. Okay, it's very brittle, so it can break easily, just like the hat of this penguin broke off. Um, yeah. All right. So we're gonna get into how a three D printer works. Okay. So right here, as you can probably see there, this um, if you can't see over there, it's a blue, blue like spool right here, and this contains what we call the filament of the printer. Okay. And it's about um, depending on the the size of the, or depending on the type of the printer, the thickness of the filament can vary. In my case, I think it's 1.75 millimeters in diameter. 1.75 millimeters. Um, and what happens is the filament is then fed into this tube right here and then into the extruder, which is the thing. The extruder is what basically spits out the plastic um, slowly so that it can print out the oven. And over here, as you can see, it's printing. Um, does anyone know what the shape, the, the name of the shape is called? Yes. What? Uh, is the shape of the soccer ball? No, this is a, a mathematical thing. Does anyone know it? Nope. The shape. Okay, it's called a... What? It's almost that. It's called a joint aggregator. Okay, it has 12 sides. I think it has 12 sides. Yeah, it has 12 sides. Okay. Um, basically, what happens in the 3D printer right, is this extruder head, it moves around around the 3D print board so that it can drop plastics, drop the PLA plastic in different locations. And once it finishes one layer, remember that slicer, it sliced it into multiple layers. This platform right here, it moves down one step. And then it'll print the next layer, and then it'll keep going until the model's finished. Can you show us how the 3D printer works? Yes, I will in just a second, actually. It might be now. Yeah. All right, um, so everyone, you guys can get up and come up here. Like, kind of like, Alright, so, okay, alright, um, how should I do this? Alright, I'm going to turn this way. Oh, this thing's really heavy, so. Okay, so. Basically, what I'm choosing right here is um, the stuff that I've imported from my computer onto this printer. So it actually comes in through this SD card right here. I can take this SD card, put it in my computer, and then like, send it to the printer right here. Okay, so I'm going to choose this, and I'm going to start. So first, first step that needs to happen. Does anyone know what needs to happen? That is correct. We need to heat up this, this thing right here. It's not existing. Does anyone know what the second step for a 3D printer is? After we heat up the... Wait, can I see? Can I see? Can I see? Okay, alright. So after it heats up this... Um, extruder right here, 
Does anyone remember how, how hot it goes to? So um, a good idea is to not touch the extruder. Yeah. Such a good idea. Good idea, right? Uh, yeah. If I, if I tell you guys, my name is Everyone touching. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's, that's the part that gets really hot, okay? Um, as you can see, there's like kind of like blue like stuff coming out already. That's from the floor. Why is it still 1%? Uh, because it's just heating right now, and it actually goes really slowly. Yeah. No, it's, it's it goes far really, far. really slowly. Is that so? Well, actually, yeah, not that slow. Like, you can see it heating uh, the temperature yeah, right here. It why. tells you. What is why it does it say only one percent? It just sits there. Because it, it it takes some time to get to. Actually, some some it takes. Okay, for example, this took probably four hours to print. Hours so, took like four hours. Like, like, no, depending on the size, right? So if I want to print like one small piece of like this Rubik's cube, right? It'll take a little shorter time. Uh, in a while, after I finish them with this, okay? We're not done yet. Alright, so um, as you can see, this is the extruder right here. It moves along these bars over here, left, right. And then these two bars over here, uh, front and back. You'll see in a second. And then also this build plate, this is what we call the build plate, the thing that goes up and down. This also heats up to a temperature of, what does it say here? The LA is 40 degrees Celsius, okay? So he's up to 40 degrees Celsius. So you can touch it, no. Um, it's heating right now, so it's fine. Um, also, don't, but don't, but don't, but don't. Um, also, basically, the, does anyone know the reason we heat this, heat this up? Yeah, that's right. You got it. Because it, because it, because it, it'll, it'll help the plastic stick to the build plate. Because if it doesn't stick to the build plate, it'll just like slide it on. So if you put our hands on it, then it will stick it's to the It's not gonna fall because it's, it's on a, it's on a smooth platform. Right? It's not gonna tilt. It's not gonna tilt. Like, <laughs> it's not gonna tilt. You can't stop dying from cold. Oh yeah, it's you can have it composed. I know okay. a really yes. good plan. Okay. Just go like to design my house. Without taking any damage. Okay, so basically, okay. 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 Right here is like oh, this thing up here. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, do you just have to wait here until we're done? Uh, no, you can't. Can I touch it? Won't, it, won't, it won't. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Can I try the sword? Oops. Can I do it? After, after, after. I'm not going to use too many things. Okay. Wait, hey, guys. Wait, wait. Is it actually sharp? Where is the sword? Wait, wait. That's a uh, Rubik's cube. I'm very proud of that. It's really good. 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 This one was designed for your cat, so you guys can do this too if you want. Yeah, the you're patient enough. You know, this is a tiny cube. That one is also designed for your cat. What is this? That one is a USB. I, just, I made it for fun. That one is supposed to go back in time. Because I that's I made it for fun. So you can see right now it's um, calibrating itself. So it's telling the printer is telling itself where the corner of, of the of the build plate is. Uh, some random thing. It, this, that's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, if you can, if you, if you can figure it out. So right now this build plate is moving up. Yeah, it's like a shoot out of plastic. Oh shoot. Yeah, you guys are gonna be making this thing, so something like this, um, later, later on this year. Um, so we can do like that. this. So you can do whatever we want after. 
Uh, no, I have like some specifications. Well, yes. Yes. Right now it's, it's, like it's printing, it's everything. priming, it's priming the printer right now, so it doesn't... Why is like it the string coming down, and then it's like, oh, I already have this. Let's see if it, if it, oh, there's nothing wrong. It starts with a skirt, uh, it should be okay. It should be okay. okay. So it takes an hour for it to finish? Let's see, what's its estimate? Did it give you an estimate? Usually the estimate is very off. Lego. Hey, just like, it says zero hours. It says five minutes. Just like, just like even. Twenty-five minutes sounds right. Okay, so right now this this is a skirt, basically to prime prime the printer again. Hey, wait, wait, why do you need to prime it again? Because the first prime wait, wait, is not that good. Oh, so it's starting to build. Just wait, you. Penguin is on island. Oh, rushing towards. So this is right. Um, this is what it's, this is what we call a support right here. Okay, just creating thin strips. Remember that gray thing. Um, remember, okay, remember this thing right here. The gray stuff all over. This guy's like. This gray stuff, okay? That's what's going on. We call those. Guys, can you like stop talking? Put the stuff in the box. Put the gray in the box. Oh, it made like a whole bunch of lines. I don't know. Okay, but anyways, right now what it's printing is the supports. Okay, we need this to support um whatever's printing. So for example, for example, um, that's a So guys, for example, if we try to print this thing right here, this thing is floating, so we can't actually print it on midair. So we need to build some preemptive support structures to help it support. That's is this thing going to get higher once he This like is going to get lower. The, the square right there? That square? Oh, it's going to get lower. lower? Yeah. I mean, oh wow! Same concept. Dude, we're going to Yeah. Wow. Hey, help me! Alright, uh, everyone, go back to your seats. I'll call you back when... Michelle! <laughs> hey, are you guys I'm tired of jumping. So this, this is our official mascot. Oh, oops. It's not the monkey no more. It's the it's the penguin. Oh my iceberg. Oh, Mr. Teacher. My dad means that it's password and now with yet. What is the iceberg? You could log into my account. Alright guys, um, so we're gonna get started with actually designing something now. Oh, we're gonna actually design something. Yes, that's right. You guys should be excited. Okay. Someone at the door. Okay. Um, can everyone open up Tinkercad? Uh, how you get there is you can just search up Tinkercad. Right now, Tinkercad. Tinkercad. I can type faster. Bro. You just search this up. T I N K E R. T I N K E R. Uh, okay. Great. Is it supposed to be this? Yes, that's right. Yeah, you guys don't have one from the Yeah, yeah well, yeah, we're sure. It should be like a lot of green. Yeah, that's a good one. Is there a best thing? Flat is boring. Uh, don't worry about that now. Um, None of you have a account. Does anyone have a Tinkercad account? No one has a Tinkercad account. Nope. 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 Okay, well, you, you. He's using my account. Okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um. Yeah. So right here, just click on this link over here. It should it should be the first one. No. Yeah. Flat is boring. Everyone is going to join now. If you don't have an account, just click join now. Like what? Wait. Where does it say join now? Okay. It says join your class. Students. Okay. Oh wait. What? Oh, where? Yeah, just wait for, uh, Mr. Teacher. Mr. Teacher. Guys, let's write educator start here. Okay, alright, let's get started then. Uh, Let me create something. Come on. That, that, that is, that is. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, wait, let me create something. Come on. Oh, don't worry about this. Since you email, it will automatically. Oh, no, 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 no. Just email. Bro. What the heck? Let's go back to Google. No, I forgot my user. My okay, alright, so, um, everyone, like, 45 your computer screens for now. And everyone, like, that square and the square, that Roblox. Um, guys, I need you to, like, get off your computers, like, make your computer screen, like, half closed. I have to remake my computer. account, because I forgot my cat. Oh, yeah, let, let people. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, 
Yeah. Everyone else. Forty five are confusing. Lucas. I'm still on the side. Okay, all right. Joy. Forty five. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna our first project is gonna be a personalized name campaign. Um basically this can be like put on your like keychain or something or on your bike, on your backpack, whatever. Um basically it'll have a hole right here and your name there. Okay, and you can make this green part anything, any shape you want. Uh, okay. Um questions, I'll answer questions in a second. How do you stack it? That's what I'll answer um, in a second. Alright, uh, we don't need this. Agenda, okay. So today we're probably not going to get through all of this stuff, but I'm going to try to show you how to orbit, can, grid out, have to be fine, and all, all this cool stuff. Um, probably can only get up to here today since we're, we're a little slow. Whoa. I already know how to do the color. I know some of you already used this before, and that's good. Yep. Um, if you know, you can go ahead and start. Um, but for now, we're going to go through some 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 tools to get to help like people who haven't like done this at all get started. So moving objects, if you haven't found out already, you guys can Wait, what's what's moving your objects, code again? You need a okay, does he have an Okay, hold on. Okay, uh I think that's it. Did you memorize it? Does it work? Oh yeah, that I think I think yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You need to type right. your class code every time. No, you only need to type it once. Okay. So guys, um, if you haven't noticed already, there are objects on the right side of your your um tab right here. Okay. You can click on an object right here and then put it into your work plane wherever you want. And you'll see this orange outline um which defines like where you're gonna place the object. You click one more time on your mouse or on your trackpad, and then it'll put the object there. And you can drag in multiple objects. You can scroll down for more choices. Um, and right here, under your kind of basic shape, you can choose. There are more different shapes you can use. Um, for example, text and numbers. You can click on any letter, anything you want that you see here. There's more pages down here. Anything that you see there, you can use it. Okay. Well, for now, just don't worry. Don't go into shape generators. These can like, if you do something like wrong, you might like crash your computer. So. For now, don't worry about these. Don't, just like, yeah, don't, don't, don't touch them. Um, yes? Can you do characters? Yeah, you can do characters, so let's take a look at that. Yeah, because I did that, and I had no idea how to get the shades on my egg. You want to get the shades? Okay, I can help you with personally with that later. Um, but yeah, same thing, same thing with these. You can also drag objects into the workspace. Alright, so now, for actually moving objects, there are two ways to move objects, okay? So first, the first step is to select the object that you actually want to move. So for example, if I want to move this red box right here, I can click on it, okay, and then I'll left click with my mouse and drag, I can left click and drag, and I can move the object around. Okay, and same thing with this object, I can left click and drag, move it around. Um, if you want to move it up, off of the work plane, in this direction, we can use this black arrow right here. This black arrow, if you click it and drag it up, or down, it'll bring it up, uh, move it up or down. And you can see right here, this number that's changing, that's the distance, um, the closest point of this object is to the work plane. And you can see this blue outline is the shadow, or how it'll look like when it contacts you. And yeah, and you can actually type in a value. So if you want this cube to be exactly 35 millimeters off of the ground, I can type in 35. And then it'll change to exactly 35. Um, yeah, so why don't you guys play around with that, um, see if you can do anything with it. Let's do a mustache and sunglasses, okay? I'll bring it up. Okay, I'm gonna put them on. No, you. Yeah. 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 Y
Basics are really important in this class, so just listen up, okay? Um, there's also another way you can move objects, okay? If you want more precision, or like you just want to not use your mouse for some reason, you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. So if I have this object selected over here, I can click the arrow key and I'll increment it um, by uh, just one millimeter every time. And if you want to, uh, this is kind of advanced, but if you want to make it increment a little less than one millimeter, you can go down to snap root over here. You guys see this? Click this, and you can change how much it increments every time you press an arrow, like an arrow key. So if I want to only go 0 0.5 millimeters to the right when I click the arrow key, I can choose this. So now it'll go like in a smaller, smaller, like, a little like less at a time. Um, but for now, just everyone stay on one millimeter because it's a good, it's a good balance. Um, yeah. Okay, next we have scaling objects. Does anyone know what the definition of scaling means? Yes? Like the size, like changing the size. Yeah, that's right, that's the spot on. That's right, it's just changing the size. So how do you change the size of the, uh, how do you change the size of an object? I think most of you have already found out there are these white and black buttons on the on the surface of this, this object right here. And if you click one of them and drag, you can stretch it or shrink it. Oh man, once again, this number right here that's changing, you can click on it and edit whatever you want. You can change it. Um, and so the black ones, they're more limited than the white ones. The white ones, that you can like drag them and change two dimensions. While the black one, you can only like move it in a single single direction. So you can play around with these. Try, try to type in different values for different things. See if you can make it, um, make a... Make a shape of perfectly like what like the size you want. And by the way, this doesn't only work for straight edge objects. You can also do it for these. Right, stretch this like this, like that. However you like. Alright, guys. Um, bring it in. So the next step we have is adding dimensions. I kind of talked about this a little earlier. Um, does anyone know what the a dimension is? Yeah. Like a side. Sure, a, a side, a side of an object. Yeah, the length is actually the length of a uh, the basically like the measurement of something. Okay. And so let's just say if we want the dimension or the measurement of the height of this bead to be exactly 55.65 millimeters. I can click this and type it in, just like I told you before. Oh yeah, and once you hit enter for that, it'll change change it to that size. Then remember, we can also change the dimension of how far something is from the ground. No, I don't have something else. Nice, nice. Okay, um, oh no. All right. Um, yeah, and so basically it'll always round to the hundredth place. So if you try to input a number that's like 3.1415, like pi, it'll round to 3.14. Okay, it'll always round to, or actually it'll truncate. It won't even round. It'll truncate. Um, all right, so next we have moving around. In Tinkercad, right, in any 3D design software, you can't just look at one plane, okay? You need to be able to look around the object, right? We need to be able to look around the object to see every every angle, to make sure every angle looks perfect. For example, if I'm trying to put, for example, if I'm trying to put, um, guys, can you, like, just, like, closer, like, computer, like, lift, just, like, oh, man. Okay. 
if I'm trying to put a roof onto this house, for example, I want to put a roof like let's just say here. Um, don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm just gonna, this is just for demonstration purposes. So right now, okay, let's take a look. This house, it looks it looks decent, right? What do you guys think about this house? Oh, what do you guys think of this house? It looks like a tree. Okay, fine. A uh, look, a tree. What do you think of this tree? It, it looks. Fine, right? It looks like a house slash tree. A tree sure, house. Sure, sure. But it, it, it looks like it looks like it could, it could be something you 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 would live in, right? I uh, know. But okay, fine, fine, maybe not. But it looks like a normal house. And if you look at it from this angle, that's true. But if we turn around, this roof is actually off off of the off of the top of the house. Okay, and so in three D design, we need to make sure that doesn't happen because if you try to print something like that, it's well, not going to turn out well. So make sure we need to make sure we can uh, be very versatile in moving around and looking around our our our, our work plane. Um, and so there's many ways you can do that. Okay, and two main ways are orbit and pan. Okay, um, and to orbit you can use this view cube. Um, this cube up here we call it a view cube, and you can click on different sides, and then it'll show you different sides. You can also drag it and spin it around to show you different sides. If you want to go back to the home view, you can always click this home button right next to it. And I'll bring you back to the home view. Home button is here, view cube is right above it. Do you have a question? Yeah? Um, what's the like pickaxe thing and the Lego block thing? The Lego uh, don't worry about that. We don't, we, don't, we don't need that. It looks really, really weird. You can, yeah, don't, that's why we don't do that. You can do that at home later. Oh, yes, what's your question? Uh, could you also do it with the light? That's right. I was just about to get to that. Right click. If you don't have a mouse, um, it's probably uh, it's however you do. Right click on your computer. You can right click and drag to orbit. Okay. Do you guys all get that? Right click and drag to orbit. Okay. Um. Next thing is pan. Okay. Pan is basically we take whatever we're looking at. We take whatever we're looking at and we just move the surface. We take a different like angle view. We don't rotate anything. Okay, so to pan, <laughs> guys, I need you to just, like focus on this into a presentation, okay? Okay. Um, basically to pan, right, you hold down shift and then we do right click and drag. So hold down shift on your computer keyboard and then right click and drag and you can move around like this. Okay, see the difference? So this is orbit right here, we're rotating around and this is pan. I don't know how to spin around. Spin around is just uh, right click and drag. Right click and drag. This is, we call it orbit. Okay. Um, and it'll always orbit to whatever object you have in have in the middle. So if I have this in the middle, it'll orbit around this object. And if you don't want that, just go back to home and reset your orbit cent uh, your orbit center point. Okay. Um, and one more thing, zoom. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, um, there are two buttons over here that are, that are plus and minus. It'll zoom you in or out depending on which one you press. Um, we can also use the scroll on your mouse on your mouse button uh, on your mouse button. Oh, so I lost my thing. Yeah, same thing. Well, once again, if you don't want to be so zoomed in, you can click the home button and it'll always bring you back. Oh, okay, so okay, there we go. Mr. Teacher, yes. I can't zoom in anymore. Okay, there's a certain limit to how much you can zoom in. And I mean, do that. I mean, I accidentally went out of the world and then now I'm here. Um, yeah, so just make sure, uh, make sure you can always find your um, objects. Okay, if you ever get lost in your workspace or something, you can just click the home button. Just don't forget that. Home button is important. Home button? Where is it? Okay, one, one last thing. Let's go over this, and then you can get started on main tags. Um, there's a lot of, the letter F on your keyboard is short, uh, it's a shortcut key for find, okay? If we have any object that we want to zoom into specifically, for example, if I want to zoom into the bottom of this house, I can select that and then click the letter F on my keyboard and I'll zoom into that. Okay. Um, the other option is if you don't want to click F, you can click this right here. F, so it tells you hit view to selected objects. And then you can click click it and then it'll, it should bring me in. Oh, there it was. It'll load. Okay, I guess it's not loading, but yeah, oh, there it is, okay. So the letter F or that button right there on any selected object and 
it all zoom in. If you do it without any selected objects, it'll, it'll bring you to the home view. Um, or just like completely zoomed out where it closes all the objects. Okay, just remember those few things for now and you should be okay. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get started on name types. I so, started. Yeah, it's fine if you already started, but it's okay. <laughs> Right here, this is um, an A type that I made like three or four years ago. I can call even longer, but um, you guys don't have to make an A type of this shape. You guys can make anything you want. Um, like, uh, for example, it's like a previous student's name type is like in the shape of a mustache. I thought it was pretty interesting, so I kept it up. Um, and you can also put a, actually I'll explain both in a second, but for now just you can choose any shape that you want, be creative, right? Um, you can choose any shape, it doesn't have to be a box, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be generic. You can go with like, you can just be creative, okay? You can even put like your name on like a, on like a heart or something, right? Remember you can stretch the size of the heart to be able to fit your name or something? Um, and yeah, so that, that's what we're gonna try to do. And this project I'm gonna print out for you guys, so make sure you guys uh, finish the project, okay? So just make sure you have like a base and like letters on it. You can also add um, extra stuff like a star top or something. If you want um, a star here, you can do that too. Have a star in here. Um, yes. Is it okay if you connect my chicken too? Like the chicken, it has like those like legs, right? It's going to be tough to print. Um, if you can, you can do the sunglasses or you can do the egg itself, but the entire thing is a little different. The chicken feet are hard to print. Uh, they might break. Okay. So, then I'll destroy the feet. Then can yeah. you do it? It might be possible. Is it possible? Sorry about this. I forgot to cover something. Um, if you didn't notice earlier, there's this like button over here that looks like a double arrow that's curvy. This is gonna be the button for you to rotate an object. Okay. Um, you can, uh, as you can see, it will click to every one of these tick mark places. Um, there, those are I think 22.5 degrees every time. So you click and drag on these. You can also in input a value. So if I want like 60, I can get that. But if you want more precise rotating, you can bring your mouse outside this this blue circle right here. If you bring your mouse outside the blue circle, you can do uh, more precise like rotating. Uh, I really don't. Yes. Is this okay? I just dropped the ice cream and put some these thingies. Hold on, I'll pull over there. I can't see. Hold on. Okay. Um. Yeah. So guys, make sure you, uh, you guys can also rotate things, right? So for example, I was explaining to. Um, the grace, then you can rotate an object. So for example, if you want your star like this, if you want an upright star, you can do this and then rotate it upwards like this. Okay, and your star will be rotated like that. And so there are three different rotation buttons. Right, one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis, and one for the z-axis. So just if you want to, depending on how you want to rotate it, you have to choose the, the correct button. Yeah. Make it not a stick. Um, guys, uh, class is actually over. We're like three minutes over. But before you guys go, I need you guys to pay attention because this is how you guys are gonna get your project to me, okay? Um, so I can print it for you. Um, and by the way, homework is to, to finish that. Wait. Yeah, if you're already finished, yeah. What if you're already finished? If you're finished, then you don't have to go over. Yeah. But, no, no, like, guys, you guys need to listen up, okay? This is very important, because you guys give me the wrong link, I cannot access your project, and I can't help you print it out. No, like, right. turn it up. So, the way we do this, okay? I cannot do that. The way we do this, you two need to pay attention. Wait, Listen up. You need to go to your project that you want me to print out for you, click send to, up here. Um, actually, I'll send a YouTube video on how to do this at home. Um, for you guys at home, and just scroll all the way down to invite people, click this, and generate a new link. 
Okay, copy this link. This is the link that, that's going to be copied onto your clipboard that you can submit to a form that I'll send to send to everyone on your email. Um, it's going to be this form right here. So just put your put that link that you copied into here. Control V and just um, that's not the link. Oh, that is the link. But, but just put it in the put it in this box right here and then submit submit the form with the color of the blueprint um, that you want. Um, yeah. I can do that. Don't worry about that right now. I'll send instructions. Um, yeah, it's the link is copied, right? So it's copied onto your clipboard. So yeah, I'll send you guys an YouTube video. Um, I'll have a YouTube video. Prepared. Yeah, so um, yeah. So if you guys need to go right now, you guys can. Maybe you have to teach them. They should go because they don't have to teach them. Yeah, we should be done right now. Yeah, so yeah, otherwise, thank you for coming today. Um, yeah, I'm gonna end next class is gonna be I think next week. So like oh, you got it. So next Friday on September September 13th. Okay, yeah, 13th. Um, guys, it Tinkercad will automatically save your work, so don't worry about it. Thank you.